Welcome to an introduction to Big O notation. Asymptotic notation is used to express and compare the growth rate of functions. In our case, the functions will typically represent the running times of algorithms. We will define the asymptotic notations in terms of non-negative functions since the running time of an algorithm is always non-negative. We will focus on the notations most commonly used in the analysis of algorithms, which are big O notation, big omega notation, and big theta notation. This lesson focuses on big O notation. Asymptotic notation allows us to express the behavior of a function as the inputs approach infinity. In other words, it is concerned about what happens to f of n as n gets larger and is not concerned about the value of f of n for small values of n. We will define three of the most commonly used notations, which again are big O notation, big omega notation, and big theta notation. And this lesson will focus on big O notation. If we let f be a non-negative function, we say f of n is big O of g of n, written as f of n equals big O of g of n, if and only if there are positive constants c and n sub zero, such that f of n is less than or equal to c times g of n for all n greater than or equal to n sub zero. So looking at the graph for a moment, if our given function is f of n, the lower function, Notice that c times g of n is the upper function for all n greater than or equal to n sub zero, where n sub zero is some value on the horizontal axis. If f of n is big O of g of n, f of n grows no faster than g of n. In other words, g of n is an asymptotic upper bound or just upper bound of f of n. And looking at the graph, hopefully that does make sense. The equals in the statement f of n equals big O of g of n should be read and thought of as is, not equals. You can think of it as a one-way equals. So saying f of n is big O of g of n is not the same thing as saying big O of g of n is f of n, for instance, with the latter statement not really making any sense. An alternative notation is to write f of n is an element of big O of g of n instead of f of n is big O of g of n. It turns out that big O of g of n is actually the set of all functions that grow no faster than g of n. So the set notation is actually in some sense more accurate. The equals notation is used because it comes in handy when doing algebra. You can essentially think of these as being two different notations for the same thing. Similar statements are true for the other asymptotic notations. Let's take a look at a proof. Let's prove that n squared plus n is big O of n cubed. Here we have f of n equals n squared plus n, and g of n is equal to n cubed. Notice for n greater than or equal to one, n is less than or equal to n cubed, and n squared is less than or equal to n cubed. Notice when n is equal to one, the left and right sides are equal, and when n is greater than one, the left side is always less than the right side. Therefore, it follows that n squared plus n is less than or equal to n cubed plus n cubed. In order to form this inequality, we replace n squared and n with n cubed. And n cubed plus n cubed is equal to two n cubed. Therefore, we can state that n squared plus n is less than or equal to two n cubed for all n greater than or equal to one. Thus, we have shown that n squared plus n is big O of n cubed by definition of big O with n sub zero equal to one and c equals two where two is the coefficient of n cubed. Before we go, let's take a look at this graphically. In red, we have the graph of the given function f of n. In blue, we have the graph of c times g of n equals two n cubed. Notice f of n is less than or equal to c times g of n for n greater than or equal to one, which does indicate f of n is big O of n cubed for c equals two and n sub zero equal to one. We can also say f of n grows no faster than g of n equals n cubed, and g of n is an asymptotic upper bound of f of n. I hope you found this helpful.